Okay, this is the uh, 12 p.m., although 12.30 p.m. now, uh, Zoom meeting for Thursday, April 22nd. We're going to work some problems out of section 10.2. The vocabulary or hypothesis test. And so we'll start on page 434. Try to work some problems I haven't worked. So let's start, say, with number 10. Null hypothesis. E equals 0.2 and alternative hypothesis less than 0.2. Hope everybody remembers this was your claim assumed to be true, a claim you're going to test. So they're asking is this left tailed, right tailed, two. Failed test. If you watched Monday's thrilling video, I hope you remember that you your symbol points to the tail to test, except for a two tail, which is a not equal. This is pointing left, making it a left tail test. Then they ask <coughs> what parameter being tested. Well, this is almost so easy. It's hard. This is the claim to be tested. Be tested. This, therefore, is the parameter. Answer. P stands for percentage. P is percentage or proportion, less than 0.2. But so the P itself is the parameter to be tested. And they give you a few more of those. Why don't we try one like 16? Historically, the time, this is off page 435. Historically, the time to order and deliver a pizza, Jimbo's Pizza, was 48 minutes. Jim, the owner, implements a new system for ordering and delivering pizzas that he believes will reduce the time to get a pizza or a determine null and alternative. Hypotheses. So your null, Ben's running out of ink here, would be, we usually use this mean equal to 48. And he has implemented a system to reduce the time. So his alternative that he's going to test eventually is less than. 48 minutes. Part B, explain type one error. Remember your straight definition is when you reject true null hypothesis. I'm using the lingo symbols to shorten things up. For this, you would then assume the null hypothesis is true and I uh, reject it. So then in part C, explain Type 
two here. By itself, that means you fail to reject faults in all hypothesis. Well, I wrote out instead of using the symbol, but that would mean you would assume that mean equals 48, the null hypothesis is false. And I fail to reject it. You would have made a type, if you did such a dastardly thing, you would have made a type two error. Why don't we try one like uh, number 20. Page 435, number 20. Overweight, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 19.6% of children age six to 11 are overweight. School nurse thinks the percentage who are overweight is different. I guess I'll point this up. Notice that word language is different. That's gonna signal a two-tail test. Different means it could be higher or lower, it's different. So part A, your null hypothesis. We're using P when it uses a percentage, P equals 0.196. We generally use a death straight decimal instead of a straight percentage. She thinks it's different. That would mean not 0.196. It's different somehow. So when in B, you explain the type one error, is writing hypotheses. Assume equals 0.196 is true and I reject it. You are rejecting a true null hypothesis. So in part C, when you explain type two error, you assume 196 is false and I fail to reject Light. Questions about that? All right, well, then we go down to this section about stating conclusions 23 to 33. We're stating conclusions. Page 435. Stating conclusions, let's try 25. The null hypothesis, not rejected. You're supposed to state your conclusion. Remember, you get your choice. Either reject, choice one, reject. Null hypothesis, choice two, fail. Reject. 
So if your null hypothesis is not rejected, they want you to state your conclusion. It's one of these two phrases. Answer. Okay, so then the answer will be um, then fail to reject. We're going to get into this more detail next week, but if you reject the null hypothesis, you assume you're, that, that means your null hypothesis is not true. H O no longer true, no longer valid or true. If you fail to reject it, that means pretty much means it's still valid. Will, I, I know this probably doesn't make any kind of sense by itself, but next week, I know you can't wait. We get into the full test where we kind of put all this together. Why don't we try like, uh, let's see. Uh, why don't we try, we did a couple of parts of 35 last time. Why don't we try 37, page 435, 37. It's about E6. According to CDC, 2.8% of high school students currently use electronic cigarettes. A high school counselor is concerned the use of e cigs at her school is higher. Determine your null and alternative hypotheses. So the null is basically what's assumed to be true, which would be published by the CDC. So this is part A, determine null and alternative hypotheses. Well, your null you take what the CDC said, 0.028, 2.8%. High school counselors concerned that the use of her school is higher. Tell so being higher than this, greater than 0.028. Okay, if you're gonna do this next week and when they, in the full hypothesis test kind of problems, this is gonna be the first step spotting the old fact that's assumed to be true and then spotting they'll have done a new survey and uh, testing uh, you know and they're again to get a different result either higher than this lower than this or occasionally they want it different than this that'll be your al your alternatives in each one all right on this problem though b if sample in data indicate that the null hypothesis should not be rejected state your conclusion Again, they're almost telling you the answer, right? In the thing. Null hypothesis should not be rejected. Should not be rejected. State your conclusion. That would be fail to reject null hypothesis. So now C. Suppose, in fact, okay, when they say suppose, in fact, they're telling you what is true. They're telling you what is true. And the, uh, they're saying it's true that P equals 0.034 was a type one or type two error committed. Okay, if this is true, if 034, gonna follow the logic of this, then the 
P equals 0.028, which is the null hypothesis, is false. And you failed to reject it. And, and in B, you failed to reject it. You failed to reject a false null hypothesis. That is the definition answer type to error. Was committed. How dastardly. Yeah, the answer is a type two error. There isn't a whole lot more I can show you. Um, it's about 20 minutes of it. Like I say, these are really baby problems. Oh, we have someone here. Oh, we have Mr. Augustine. I didn't just now notice to you. I was about to end. Do you uh, have any uh, questions? No, no, no okay. questions. I'll, I'll catch up at the, uh, the next lecture at, at night. Okay. Well, actually, it's going to be at eight tonight. Eight. Yes, sir. Eight. Okay. Well, you, want, uh, you just go ahead and come then. Uh, yes, yes, Professor. Yes, Professor. Okay. Well, sounds good. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sure thing. Okay. There will be a quiz tomorrow. Quiz over 10.1 is tomorrow. I don't remember quite the quiz number, but the next one do Sunday. Uh, week of next week. Next week. That would be uh, 426 to 430. Test five over. There'll be no quiz. Test five over eight, one, nine, two, ten, one, ten, three will be given. And the week after that is final exam week. That is five, three, two, five, seven is final exam week. So you should have received the final exam review sheet. I mailed it out yesterday. Review sheet with key. I emailed it. Yesterday. So we are winding this down. I know that breaks everyone's hearts. All right, we'll have another zoom meeting 8pm tonight. p.m. tonight. All right, we will see you then. Go ahead and end the meeting then.